so glad you're streaming with us as we continue our coverage here from the RNC. You know, my next guest is currently the youngest governor in the United States, and she's also, of course, following in her father's footsteps. Sarah Huckabee Sanders now serves the people of Arkansas as the state's first ever female governor. But before that, as we all know, Sarah Sanders was a senior advisor for the Trump campaign, following him right into the White House before taking over as the White House press secretary. She remains a trusted ally of Donald Trump and, well, got rave reviews for her speech this week at the RNC. Here's just a bit of it. And he's the leader our country needs. And if ever there was a doubt, earlier this week, we saw just how tough, resilient, courageous, and daring this man is, and we can't get him back in the White House fast enough. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders joining me now on set for more. It is so great to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you, too. I'm glad to be here. Well, let's start out with just um, your relationship with the former president. You were such a trusted, you were more than a press secretary. You were always in the room with him and advising him. He trusted you. He depended on you. Um, when Saturday happened, the, assess, the attempt to assassinate him. What was going through your mind? What were your thoughts? Did you get a chance to talk with him? Uh, you know, it was really heartbreaking to see. Um, and with all of the coverage and it being live, it was just one of those moments that you'll never forget where you are when you saw it, when you watched it. Um, I had the chance to talk to him about, about 24 hours or so later that Monday morning. And um, there's a different pitch in his voice. But there was also just a resolve and certainly a strength in him going through that. And then stepping into this convention hall on Monday was one of the most powerful, epic moments that we've seen in any convention history. And there's such a unification for the party and everyone coming together to support this president. Uh, I'm proud that I get to stand with him and was honored to have the chance to tell my story and why I think we need him back in the White House. So when you say different pitch, because as you know, I, I had Reverend Franklin Graham here uh, just last hour, and he says there's just no way you can go through something like that and not have some type of, a, of an awakening. Are we going to see a different Donald Trump? I mean, from... You know, calling this or call, calling the last election rigged and the insurrection and the, the dangerous rhetoric. And look, he's a convicted felon now. I've, I've got to ask you about this. Do you really believe we are going to see a different Donald Trump? Look, I don't think we're going to see something drastically different, but I do think that there will be uh, the beginning of his speech. I think you will see a slightly different tone. Um, but the American people don't want to see a different Donald Trump. There's a reason that he is crushing Joe Biden in the polls. They want somebody who is a fighter. They want somebody who is strong. They want somebody who's capable of taking a bullet and standing back up on the stage, putting their hand in the air and telling us that not only is he going to fight, but we're going to fight to take our country back. And that's what they want in a leader. They don't want somebody who can't get up the stairs by himself. They want somebody who presents strength and comes to that office with the ability to lead. And that's exactly what they get in Donald Trump. Ability to lead, strength. I just want to pivot for a moment to President Joe Biden, because I covered the White House for, for ABC News when Trump was oh. president. You were the press secretary. Uh, I was grateful for the time that I spent in the Oval with the president. You were always uh, there. You gave me a good opportunity to ask you a number of questions, which you are giving me now. Thank you very much. Uh, and I will not waver from the tough ones, uh, nor more of the, 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 the you know, passionate ones, um, because I feel like I know you very well, but just watching Biden's press secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre, um, this has been just, I mean, you talk about damage control. I'm just curious what your advice would be to her in this situation in light of everything that's happening right now. Uh, you know, uh, it, in jest, I would say brush up on your resume because you're not going to be in that job, I don't think, much longer. But... I also think that you need a team around you. He has to continue on through at least November when I think Donald Trump will beat him if he stays in the race. Um, but 
she has a really difficult story to tell. The difference for me, we had a strong economy. We had a secure border. We had good relationships around the world. She doesn't have that right now. And she doesn't have a president that can go out and speak for himself the way that we had in Donald Trump. You know as well as anybody, he's one of the most accessible presidents we've ever seen. He loved to take questions. He loved to engage with the media. I can't so, remember. There were a number of times, Governor, you will remember, he just walked out to my live shot, the Secret <laughs> Service freaking out. But yes, you're right. I, I mean, and I, and I got grilled for that when I talked about how he he, you know, gave access no matter who it was. We had more opportunities to get him as he was leaving, coming, even came out to the area where we all were, sometimes the briefing room at a whim. And I know sometimes that stressed you out, too. <laughs> but access is, to continue your thought, um, access is definitely something uh, that he provided. It is in this contrast with a president who's not capable of doing that. It's not only that maybe he doesn't want to, but he doesn't have the ability to provide that access. So that's all going to fall on his team. And they have a really, really difficult job to execute. Let me ask you something as governor. Um, you signed this bill in Arkansas, in Arkansas recently to create a, a monument to the to the unborn. Uh, Donald Trump appears to sort of be softening on his position right now on abortion. He really hasn't been steadfast, stressing that it should be left to the states. Um, do you think that we will see a national abortion ban if Trump makes it back to the White House? You know, that's something that we'll have to wait and see what happens on a federal level. I'm proud of the fact that I get to lead the most pro-life state in the country. Uh, I'm not going to apologize for being pro-life and siding with the culture of life. Um, I don't think President Trump's position has changed. He has always kind of maintained that this is a state thing for him. Um, and as a governor of a state, I'm happy to take that mantle and continue leading on that front in Arkansas. I'm curious. Um has he called you in the past couple of years just you know, as a friend, former advisor, his press secretary, for advice on some of these issues? You know, we haven't talked specifically about that issue significantly since I've been out of the White House, but certainly had the chance to talk about a lot of other things. Um, I continue to have a great relationship with the president. I'm very proud of what he was able to do for four years, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he will be able to accomplish in his next four. I know that you are the acting governor, and this was something you had been thinking about. I'm a full-time <laughs> governor. I'm not acting. <laughs> I'm sorry. You are now full-time <laughs> acting as governor. Yeah, you know, you're right. I should watch my language. But, and, and I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I do have to ask it. If indeed he were to become president again and he asked you to come aboard, would you consider it? You know, I absolutely love the job I'm doing. I love being back home in Arkansas, being governor, getting to be a mom to our three kids. I've got a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 9-year-old, <laughs> which is a full-time job all by itself yes, in it addition is. to being governor. I want to do everything I can to support the president, but I want to be in Arkansas and continue to lead my state. I know how balance is very important to you. Appreciate you being here, Governor. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You bet.